RX Television on RXMuscle.com. This is Iron Debate, the show where we settle the score. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. Pleased to be joined today by our esteemed panel, of course, the man they call the technician, Chris Aceto, and special guest joining us today, who man usually joins us prior to the Olympia to help us break the Olympia down, joining us a few months beforehand, Dennis the Menace James. And then, of course, in our Cape Coral studios, Dave Palumbo. I, you know, again, I, you know, today, Sid, today's uh, show is about Kai Green, but I, I, Dennis James is looking very, very large today. What, I thought you were downsizing. I'm still downsizing, my brother. It's just that I haven't been training for like almost 11 months with my injuries last I know. year. And I'm back in the gym, and I don't know why. Shit's just happening. Chris, does that look suspicious to you? No, I thought you were going to say he looks young. <laughs> he does, too. I mean, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. I'm looking at the screen and thinking, DJ looks – you know what it is, DJ? You said yes. I'm going to – what did you say before the show? You're not going to uh, – you're going to let bygones be bygones. I swear, before you thought – before you said that, I was just going to come out and say, man, you look like you're 38 years old. I'm dead serious. I appreciate that. If you were a girl, I would invite you for a drink. <laughs> so keep it there. Keep it there. You look young, and Dave says you look bigger. You're on a winning streak. <laughs> Thank you. Thank. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know. Something's good happening with you. Yeah. I'm just going to restart the show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Iron Debate on RxMuscle.com. <laughs> with that said, as Dave mentioned, today's episode is about Kai Green. We've been asking this question now for the better part of five years. Will Kai Green do the Olympia? Seemingly every Olympia since 2014, we've been asking ourselves the question. Now, the closest that it came was, of course, in 2015, and we all know what happened then. But since that point in time, and especially ever since Sean Roden had his hand raised last year, the speculation began with Kai Green chiming in in the way he only knows how to, feeding that speculation. Well, yesterday... Dave Palumbo had Dan Solomon on the show and asked him point blank. Of course, Dave, uh, Dan Solomon, the new producer for the Mr. Olympia competition. So controlling a lot of what you're going to see on the stage in Las Vegas this upcoming September. Dave asked him point blank, did the Olympia extend a special invite for Kai Green this Olympia? Can't do it. Kai Green. Where are we at? Special invite? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah, you know, I wish I could tell you I had some news there. You know, I did, it's no secret that I did meet with Kai. We had a great meeting. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to him. Um, you know, Kai's got a lot going on. He's got a lot of projects, a lot of interests. He's out there involved in film and different things that he's, he's doing. And uh, he's having a great time. He seems to be doing very well in pretty much all aspects of his life. Um, we did make it very clear to Kai that we would very much like to have him at the Olympia. Right. And, um, and that we wanted to work through various ways to make that happen. Um, the conversations really didn't end up in a place where I know the fans were kind of waiting to find out if he was going to uh, make a commitment. There has been no commitment made. Um, you know, we were still. So the offer, the offer was put out there, though. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, the, the we made it very clear to Kai Green that we wanted to compete at the 2019 Mr. Olympia, and we certainly want to um, make him as welcome and make it as clear to the fans and to everybody around the world. That Kai Green is somebody who I believe makes the Mr. Olympia a more compelling contest. Well, of course, the speculation began just a few months ago. There was a picture taken with Dan Solomon and Kai Green at the AMI offices in New York City. And of course, that began all the speculation. Well, in one of Kai's recent public comments about the Olympia, which was back in December, where Dave Palumbo interviewed Kai Green at the Dubai Muscle Show. Dave asked him point blank if his plans for this upcoming year include stepping on the 2019 Olympia stage. Talk about a Kai Green comeback to the Mr. Olympia competition. Uh, I wish it were that simple. I really do. Um, we had a conversation. Right. Um, but the conversation was still very incomplete, and we still have some things to look at. So, you know, we have some things to discuss. So I'm really not even in a place to, to say one way or another, you know. Let me ask you this question. Do you 
want to come back to the Mr. Olympia competition if, if, the, if the situation was right for you? The environment that was created was ideal for you to come back. Um, yeah, yeah. Dennis James, we go to you first. 2019 Olympia, will Kai Green be on that stage? Well, <laughs> anybody who knows Kai Green knows that you can ask him that question probably tw three times a day. You'll still never know <laughs> what, it, what he says. Because uh, uh, if you ask me the question if I would like to see him on stage, I would love to see Kai back on the Olympia stage. I'd love to see Kai back on any stage, you know, for that matter. But um, I think um, if he ever considers, you know, or if he ever thought about doing the Olympia in the past, let's say, whatever, four, three, four, five years that he's, you know, it's been out. I think if he ever thinks, you know, should I or shouldn't I, I think this would be the year for him to literally, you know, really come back and, 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 and do the Olympia. If he, gets an invite, or if he has to qualify, whatever, I think. But if he considers, if there was a little bit of Kai Green, a little bit of Olympia in the back of his head, I think this would be the year for him to come back and do it. He's obviously in tremendous shape all year round. You know, kudos for that, number one, because I know how hard it is to travel and to be, to be, to be on point. So he, it's not like he, uh, he needs time to train, he needs time to diet. I think he needs about eight weeks to be ready for the Olympia stage. So um, if there's a 10% chance in Kai Green's head of doing it, I think this would be the year. Dennis James, I'm going to ask you in a different way, shape, or form. You are the MC for the Olympia press conference. Will you be handing the mic off to Kai Green to ask him a question about him taking the stage the next night? At the, at the <laughs> press conference? At the press conference, it might be too late. So, I mean, if he's not, <laughs> if he's not at the at the check-in on you know, Wednesday night, I'm, I'm think, trying to I'm trying to get a yes or no out of you. Ah, will he yeah. be on the athlete days? Hell yes. I love it. I love it. Chris, the technician, Aceto, you heard what you heard from that clip from Dan Solomon. In your opinion, Kai Green will he do the Olympia? I don't think he'll do the Olympia, um, and. You know, I, I'm speculating, of course, we all are. But, you know, to me, the Olympia for, for like Kai is like a, like the greatest relationship ever, right? You're 18 years old. You know, everyone knows Kai's history. He wanted to be Mr. Olympia from, you know, a teenager. He went through the ranks, you know, established, more than established himself, was a major league threat. Um, and at every Olympia, you know, so he's in love with like a lot of bodybuilders that idea of becoming Mr. Olympia and he's capable and has been capable of becoming Mr. Olympia. And he's been, you know, he's been really, really close, which makes it even more difficult and challenging leaving an Olympia thinking, ah, you know, this was close. I could have won this show or even judges told me it was really close or, you know, the critics, the ones with, you know, strong DJ Chris, Dave said, you know, you, you could have won the show. It was that close. I think where he's probably at now is it's it's like that that ultimate relationship where you put so much into, so much effort, so much energy, every fiber of your being, and then you find out that that relationship is not what you thought, meaning you get hurt in that relationship. It's hard to reboot and come back regardless of Phil not being there, because part of the speculation is, well, Phil's not there, it'd be easy for Kai to win. But to reboot at his age, even though he's in great shape all year round, to mentally put that passion back into winning is like the, the ultimate, what was a great relationship seemingly gone bad. And now, you know, you, you, you think what could have been, what should have been, and you get shy or nervous or you know, trepid in terms of, you know, should I actually risk it all? Because the flip side is, what if he goes to the Olympia? And then what if? What if he doesn't win? What if he's third? What if he's fifth? I mean, there's a lot of impressive people in the lineup. Dennis? Chris, you, you make a valid point, but 
What if he plays the second or what if he third? The fans would still fucking appreciate him getting oh. back on that stage okay. for the for the sake of the sport, for the fans. It's Listen. not all about Kai being Mr. Olympia or getting the uh, 200,000 for second place. I believe Kai, deep inside his head, he knows. He's staying super, super lean. Listen, he's a good businessman. He has good people around him, a good person around him to get some good, good opportunities to make money. He doesn't need to be in the kind of condition that he's in all year round. He doesn't need to go to the gym at three in the morning because he <laughs> arrives late on the plane and train for another two hours. This is not somebody that, uh, you know what I mean? I don't need that. He is somewhere still there. He's still focused. So I don't think for a minute that he says, uh, I will never compete again. I believe he's still keeping that door open for him to say, fuck it, let's go. And it's not about, uh, uh, it's not about, you know, him getting on that stage and winning or losing. It's about him making the world of bodybuilding happy because everybody wants to see him back on stage. Oh, no, I, I agree. There's no argument there. And there's no argument that he's the most popular guy in bodybuilding. I mean, he doesn't even need to compete. He can just show up at the Olympia in a tank top and get the biggest line, you know, that he can, that anyone who's on that stage. Next to me, yeah. next to me. With me <laughs> and, and, <laughs> And, you know, he's got not only does he have the total fan base, total numbers, but people, you know, let's face it. There's a difference between I mean, Kai's got this crazy fan base where someone may be a fan of someone else's, but they're like all in for Kai. You know, yes. he's like this bigger than life character is a cross between a bodybuilder and Spider-Man. Uh, you know, he's an artist, you know, the way he talks, the way he handles himself, everything he's doing outside of bodybuilding. So in terms of the promotional value for the sport you know, it's a home run. In terms of excitement for the Mr. Olympia, it's bigger than a home run. Um, I just think that you can prep for a Mr. Olympia. And and I agree with all those things that you said, but you're still a competitor. And there there is, no matter how confident and how great you are, there is always fear with every athlete. The what if, what if I end up third? What if Rami beats me? What if Roden beats me? I mean, you know, what if Roley beats me? What if Cedric beats me? What if I look incredible and they all beat me? It, it's a, I'm not saying he's an egomaniac, but it's an, e by any means, but it's an, it's a knock against your ego. It's a, a, it's a knock against your stature. The benefit of him staying out is us speculating, say, oh, you know what? Had Kai won this year, gone this year, he would have killed uh, these guys because Roden looked okay, Rami looked okay, Roley looked okay, you know, the whole gang, uh, Bonac and, and uh, you know, the whole gambit, they all looked, you know, not at their best and he could have came in here and won. So I think, I think I agree with all those things that you said and I think he's, and I agree with you that he's weighing it. He's weighing it in his head, probably based on the way he looks. But at the ultimate, at the end, you have to make that decision. And I think, will he make the decision? No, because he could have made the same decision last year or the year before. He could have got into the Olympia. If he, listen, if he, he, he called up Robin Chang and said, I want in, I think, and, and he let that out with the fans, you know, I want in, and he didn't want to qualify. I think people would have bent over backwards and said, you know what? It's Kai Green. We know what he's capable of. Give him the special invite. They don't throw out special invites year to year, but you know, there's some people who deserve it all the time, even well, if they haven't won the Olympia. Guys, let me let me get let me get Dave in here real quick. Dave, haven't asked you the question. You interviewed Dan Solomon yesterday. You from the vibe of the conversation, and of course, the clip that we just played. In your opinion, months down the road at the Olympia, will we see Kai Green? From, from what I got from Dan, Dan didn't seem too confident that Kai was going to be on that stage, although he'd love him on the stage. And he said, look, they're willing to do what it takes over there to get Kai on that stage. But you know Kai. Kai's got to make that, that um, decision. And I, I, I think that Chris is right in a respect. I, I think Kai thinks that they're not going to let him win the Olympia. And I think it's because he showed up so many times, got second behind Phil. It was a bad taste. I almost feel like... Kai's like the George Foreman of like of bodybuilding world. You know, he was kind of like almost like, like like when he was competing, he was almost like the bad guy at some at one point when he was it was him and Phil. You know, they had some bad blood and 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 now that he's been removed though, and and the whole landscape has changed since he's been on stage. Different, well, a lot of different competitors up there. He's beaten everyone who's been up there already. 
you know, I, I think now would be the time for Kai to slip back in because now he's kind of like the the guy who has the George Foreman grill. Everyone loves Kai now. You know, they, he's the guy who's doing the little Broadway shows, the one-man stage shows. He's the guy who's got a zillion followers on all his social media platforms. He's the one, anytime he, he comments on anything, people jump all over it because everyone loves Kai. So he's the feel-good guy now. So you get him in there in the best shape of his life. I, I don't think the judges can deny this guy. I think that would be like a, like a mutiny almost. So I think now is the time Kai should get in there. But the question is, will he in his mind accept that, you know what, my role has changed in the bodybuilding world. I'm not that guy who is, you know, battling it out like a warrior with Phil and, 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 and just barely, you know, missing the, the sand out. Now I'm like the feel good guy. I'm like the, the people's, you know, uh, best friend guy. Uh, I'm the feel good champion. I'm the guy who they want to see up there. He has to, if he changes that mindset, I think he'll be able to enable himself to do it. Now, the question is that De Dennis Range was interesting. Is Kai still in his mind training for that Olympia and that's why he looks the way he does? Or is he still that big and, and training at you know, three in the morning because he just loves training and his whole identity is associated with being a bigger than life character? That is hard for me to distinguish. I don't know. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I would think that, I, I, to tell you the truth, I think Kai would stay big even if he said, I'm officially never going to compete again, which he hasn't said obviously. But, um, so it, 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 it's a tough one. I would but like let me to get see you on, on that Let me stage. get you on record. What? Yes or no? Uh, let's get you on record. Yes or no? Will he be on the stage? If I had a bet on it, yes. I would say no. If I okay. want to just throw it out there to be the controversial guy I am, I, I say that he's going <laughs> to, at the last minute, make the decision to get on that stage. Dennis, I want to go back to you real quick because when you consider the scenario that Kai would theoretically be entering, right? Right? You have a new champion that he'd be going up against looking to dethrone. If you consider age, he is 43 years old. So if not this year, do you see any other opportunity, any other window for him to go back on the Olympia stage? Um, uh, I, I think this will be the year for him to get the invites. I don't think they will extend the invites every year, him turning it down. I mean, sooner or later, they're going to be like, all right, this is it. I think this is a year because Phil was dethroned last year, so Phil was his rival. You know, there's you know speculations of Phil not coming back this year. We're not sure if he is or not, and uh, you know, and everybody on that stage, uh, Kai has been beating them for years. Now, here is why I say there's a good chance that we'll see him on stage this year, and I think I might have a little bit to do with it. I will take one for the team. Now, yeah. listen to me. I'm gonna give you guys. A small story about what happened a couple of years ago. A lot of people probably seen the video over there. In San Marino, I was host. I don't even know if I was hosting the show. I ended up with the microphone in my hand, something they should never do. <laughs> and I saw Kai Green in the audience. So I, of course, um, you know, trying to get the crowd in Italy a little bit, you know, riled up. I said, who would like to see Kai Green take his shirt off and pose? Of course, the crowd went nuts. You know what I mean? And you know how it is. You can't just sit there as a professional bodybuilder. So Kai <laughs> took the microphone and said, I will take my shirt off if DJ takes his shirt off. Mm. Now, that's all you need to say. <laughs> if, if, you know, I don't care if I look like a piece of fucking hot garbage. If I have to take my shirt off so you take yours off, I will take one for the team and take off my shirt, which I did. And Dave was there. He yeah. saw it happen. I took my shirt off. Now, you know. Go ahead and, 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 and take care. You know, you, you that's your work. Take, he took his clothes off. I mean, his shirt. He posed. And the crowd went nuts. Now, a couple of days ago, I posted a picture with me doing an interview with Kai on stage. Also in Italy last year at the uh, San Marino Pro, I guess it was. And uh, I put that picture up on, and, I, and I put the... Uh, 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 I wrote, uh, who wants to see Kai back at the big dance? And of course, everybody wants to see... There's a few guys that think... He's letting fans down, but everybody wants to see Kai back on stage. Kai commented, exactly. Kai commented on, on this post and said, it takes two to tango. So I take that as Kai is challenging me again. Now, Kai, I apologize because I will most likely not qualify for the Olympia. But if this is what it takes for you to go to the Olympia, I will take <laughs> one for the team in front of the whole world and step on stage in any of them shows leading up to the Olympia, just no fucking all know nothing in fucking Bermuda shots if I have to. <laughs> and fucking pose. I'll make a fool out of myself in public 
get Kai back on stage. <laughs> Dennis James at the Tampa Pro. Book it. We're having this? Well, any any fucking pro. I don't care if it's whatever pro. I'll go on there. I'll just fucking walk on stage. I, they'll probably tell me. They'll probably tell me after pre he did not come back for the finals. I, I heard Dennis. You might go out to uh, Oxygen Gym there and train for six weeks prior to the Tampa show to get yourself in shape. Oh, I'll probably be four hundred and fifty pounds and busted wide open. No, no, no. Here's the deal. Now, if this is what it takes, because Kai said, if it's challenging me again on this, I will take one for the team. I will take one for the whole bodybuilding community yes. and make a fool out of myself. But if he gets on that stage, I will do it. All right. You heard it. Chris Aceto, let's go back to you. And uh, same question that I asked Dennis. If not this year, is there another window of opportunity for Kai to re-enter the Olympia? Or is this it? Uh, you know, I think this is it simply because um, there's this idea that there's this idea that Kai could not beat Phil, whether true or imagined, there was an idea. I don't know if it's, I mean, it's just only because, only because he had not yet. So that, that you know, idea floats around, but more to DJ's point, I mean, you can't, you can invite, give someone a special invitation. You can't beg them to come back. You can't coddle them to come back. You can't come back in 2020 and say, you know, we're extending the special invite, you know, this year and it ended to 2021. It just makes the people providing the invitation look like beggars as opposed to somebody out there, you know, trying to promote the, the show and provide a legitimate invitation. So um, having said that, I think if it's not this year, then I, it, it, probably, it probably won't happen. Um, the other thing is, that, you know, with Kai to, you know, all bodybuilders like to be the center of attention. And I don't mean that in a negative way, you know, and as a, you know, he's like, a cele he's a big, obviously bodybuilding celebrity. He's kind of like a quasi celebrity other places. I mean, people recognize him. Stranger things. But Kai does not have to get on the stage to legitimize who he is. That's, that's also a holdback for him. I mean, wherever he goes, there's Kai Green. So, uh, you know, it, it's not like he has to get up there and prove himself. So he's proving himself every day through his social media. He's proving himself by, I guarantee this, DJ can disagree with me if he wants, but I know he won't. Out of all the Olympians, right? If the show, out of everyone prepping for that show, who would win if the show was today? Kai would. Nobody looks like him right now with 20 weeks to go. Everyone's fat or fat and small or big and fat or big and watery or, you know, nobody looks like that. So, um, I mean, those are some of the, you know, interesting dynamics, really, that are only unique to the Kai Green experience. You know, Phil coming back, that's just to get his title back, damn it. You know what I mean? It's different than Kai. He don't even need the title. You know, I mean, just the show, for God's sakes, Kai. Well, you know what I mean? Just the show about Kai turns into this big spectacle as opposed to us talking about any other guy getting ready for the Olympia. Let, let me throw a scenario out there. What if, what if Kai commits to do the show? Or what if, let me, here's a better one. What if Phil commits to do the show? Because I'm hearing rumblings that Phil might want to do the show. But let's say Phil commits to do the show. And then a week later, Kai commits to do the show. Does the Kai announcement overshadow the Phil comeback? Dennis? No. I think that will, that will, uh, uh, that will, get everybody excited for another battle between Kai and Phil. And they would probably forget about John Roden, who is the Mr. Olympia. Who would probably beat both of them, you know, because they forgot about it. You'll never know. But here's what I wanted to say to, to Chris, what Chris said, that Kai doesn't need the Olympia. He, he doesn't need it. Financially, he doesn't need it. But, and popularity-wise, he doesn't need it either. But what would it do to Kai Green's name if it comes in and wins the Olympia? And Historic. His, all his lifetime dream. That would make yeah. him the absolute... Unbelievable. I mean, th that would be a story that you couldn't even fucking. Well, that, therein, therein lies the whole carrot. That's the whole. I mean, that is the whole. But I would, I would love to go into a show knowing that doesn't matter where I place, they're going to be so many people happy to see me on that stage. You know, that alone. Can you imagine if they would announce right now, Phil is coming back, Kai is coming. 
that shit would be sold out for the very first time. Yeah. Well, well Dennis, let's let's piggyback off what Dave just mentioned and speculate further. If we were to go there now with Phil Heath, Dave saying that he's hearing rumblings, in your opinion, would Phil, regardless of whether Kai would participate or not, would Phil come back to try to get his crown back? I really hope so. I want to see him back on stage trying to get his crown back. But what would it look like if you get beat and you don't come back the next year? Unless you're injured and you don't, you can't. But what is take, what is telling you, oh, I need to wait another year until I get to about 41 or 42? Because Phil is about 42 now. Is he 40? I think he's 40, yeah, 40. Yeah, because I know he's Dennis Wolf's age, and Dennis Wolf is 40, so he must be 40. So why would I say, oh, let me wait till I get 41 or 42? Nah, you don't have that time no more. You need to come back right now because he's still hot. So in your opinion, you don't see a scenario where Phil will come back. This, 39, by the way. You don't see where a scenario in which you will come back this year. You think more likely than not we'll see him next year. No, I hope we see him this year. Well, hope, but what do you think? If you had to I let think, out. If, if, if I think that Phil's it's a seven-time Mr. Olympia. He, I mean, this got to be, it's got to be terrible to lose the show, you know, after so many years winning it. And I don't think he's going to wait. I think. He knows, I think he knew when he left Vegas last year that he's going to come back this year, just like Jay Cutler did in 2009, and he's going to get his title back, which will put him right back to where he was to be one of the greatest to ever, you know, to ever uh, bodybuild. Chris? Yes, what? <laughs> <laughs> Bill Heat speculation, can you see in this scenario where she will come back this year as opposed to... He's not to coming back. back. He's not coming. Phil's not coming back. I've ever? Said that. Ever I've, or this yeah, year? I've, well... I've told Dave that. I mean, I've told Dave that off the record before he lost to Sean. I said, when, when, uh, when Sean wins, Phil will not come back. So I mean, it was it was a good guess that Sean was going to win. So I just got to stay by that consistency and think that it's a you know good guess that he won't come back. Dave, final word out of you. Why? About- I'd like to know why Chris thinks that, that Phil won't come back. Because because. Phil was not um, Phil was not a good loser. Um, who, and he was, Chris, who would be a good loser after seven years? I'm not, I'm not done. Seven years. He was never a good winner. He was never a good winner, dude. <laughs> uh, I mean, he talked. So, I mean, that's that's you know, I used to. Anyways, he was never a a you know, if people didn't Gracious. give him the greatest accolades that he won. You know, his skirt would, you know, fall down. So I mean, he was. That's 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 that's. I mean, that's it, that's pretty factual, right? I mean, it's it it's it seems like, you know, you did the, the press conference. You can go back to 2015. You asked Sean Roden a question. Holy shit! Somebody disrespect Phil because you asked not Sean about Phil. You just asked him. What shots do you think you can win? And he and he, you asked him front door bicep. You couldn't get through them all. They had to be interrupted by Phil by saying he's smoking crack. You know, it was it was Phil with you know Kai on the press conference, you know, well, going at it with him. I guess I guess that's that that's his personality, and you know what I mean. You can't control people, but you, you, you know we can't knock him as a champ. He won the show seven years, and I still believe that if Phil would have came in with a controlled stomach. He would probably still be Mr. Olympia now. You no, know? I mean, I'm not knocking in any way. You know what? I, I'm I'm saying I don't think he will come back for the reasons that I said. Uh, I think that um, I think there's some fear there. I think there's some fear. You know, I think he never took Sean Broden, um, uh, at least outwardly, never took him as a threat. He had seen said he was a threat. He had to eat those words. Um, so it, it's it's difficult. It's difficult training for the Mr. Olympia. It's totally different training as I am Mr. Olympia. This is my show versus I have to beat someone now who is Mr. Olympia. That said, Phil Heath is one of the greatest physiques of all time, period. So I, you know, it's, you know, I don't want to, uh, although I'm maybe dissing the way he held the title. I mean, I've been right there with someone who's competing against him and, you know, people, Davis asked me, what do you think? I said, shit, Phil, he's the best guy up there. So it's, it's, you know, clearly he's deserved the title 
over and over. Dave, final word. We've been talking about Kai this whole episode. Phil Heath, will he come back this year? Will he come back next year? Will he come back ever on the Olympia stage? I have to agree with uh, with Dennis. I, I think it's driving Phil crazy that he lost the title. And he didn't, you know, he didn't get beat. He, he, he beat himself, essentially. So in his mind, he can fix the problem, you know. And, and even though a lot of people might be saying, hey, take a year off. You had a major surgery again. He's probably feeling good about himself. I'm sure his training is going well now. I think that him and Hani, you know, will probably, you know, you know, make an assessment at some point in the next month or two whether they're going to do it or not. And I, I think he wants to do it. I think he. I didn't think. He, I think in his mind when he first left the stage and we did a cut. You know, we interviewed him after he, yeah. he lost. He he really was thinking I need this major surgery. I, I'm just going to need to relax. It's going to take me a while to recover from it. I think now that he's recovered, he's training well, and everything feels good, I, I can't see him sitting out. I, I don't see him sitting on that sidelines and watching the show and then saying to himself, man, I should have done it. I, I could have beat, beat these guys. So I, I think it's way more likely we're going to see Phil Heath on that stage than Kai Green. If I had a bet on one of them, I would go with Phil all the way. Let's, let's wrap with that. Dennis, more likely to be on the Olympia stage this year, Kai or Phil, this year? Well, well, if I go on stage, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got this message for Kai. He said, Kai, give me at least two weeks' notice before the Olympia so I can manipulate my sodium and my water. <laughs> but if, 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 if that's not going to happen, if he's, not, if he's, you know, if he's going to accept, you know, he's going to have to confirm the challenge. But if not, of course, I see Phil on that stage before I see Kai. Chris? Um... I would agree with that. I mean, uh, I don't think we'll see either of them, but I, I think that I think that you know you'd most likely see Phil um, because Phil needs that title for validation, and Kai does not. There is a viewer poll in the making. That's going to do for this episode of Iron Debate. Again, special thanks. To Dennis James, Dave Palumbo, Chris Aceto, and our producer, Tyler Shore. Comment below, what do you think? Will we see Phil? Will we see Kai or neither at this upcoming Olympia? D Dennis. Also, comment below, what show should I do? And I'm not, <laughs> hey, listen. I what not, division? What class? I'm not afraid to put on the board shorts and do the physique category, <laughs> any pro category. Anyone you'll have you Jeremy, you'll have Jeremy, Jeremy Buendia. Don't start I just that. You'll... You're in trouble if you do the board. Yeah, Jeremy would be able to have a nervous uh, breakdown uh, if you do that. I don't want no beef with Jeremy. I don't want no beef with Jeremy. I, but I, I, will get, I will put on some board shorts with the U.S. flag on them. I think Dennis... And also, should, also... I want to see Dennis Kyle James Dennis. doing the Tampa Pro because I think we're going to see Big Ramy there and we're going to see Dexter there. And that would be a great you know show for you to do just to be up there on the stage with those two guys. Yeah, I want to know DJ's assessment of Ramy and Dexter in Tampa. Whoa. Oh, boy. Oh, well, is, is, is Rami really doing the Tampa Pro? Well, he said, tech, he said, quote, August, Tampa well, Pro. Well, they said only. New York before, so what happened with that? So. Well, a couple of factors. One, Ramadan, the fact that he's going to be fasting, and then I guess to him, his public noticed that he and his coach, uh, Neil Hill, needed some more time. But he did say August and Tampa Pro being the That's the last out. show he can do. Right. Now, Dave and so Chris Tampa did speculate about so Lebanon, about uh, George Farrah Classic. So, you Tampa see that would be the, so Tampa would be the last show to possibly yeah. to qualify for right. this Right, but then it's a week before yes. that. A week before that would be the George Farrah Classic in Lebanon, practically his backyard. So, which means he has a chance to qualify out of the country or come back and use the last opportunity against Dex? Shit, I'll be out of the country. <laughs> That's what I said. That's what I said. I would probably take... I would probably go stay out of the country, do that one first, and if something goes bad, bad, keep going. But I, I wouldn't put all well. We don't put all your eggs in one basket and, and go against Dex. And there might be a couple of other guys that's going to look great. So I, I wouldn't really be super confident, um, unless you look fucking ridiculous and you break the condition, which he has to. I mean, he's going to be obviously the the high favorite going into the show and, and, and the Tampa pro will probably be super happy to have a guy like Rami on that stage. But you know, Dexter ain't bullshitting. Oh, no.
and I believe Dexter this year is more dangerous than he was last yes. year. That was my follow-up. Why? I was going to, I knew, that's what they, last, I want, year, last year, I felt Dexter was a little bit too comfortable. He, fe he felt too comfortable. I he, knew. I, that was a softball thrown at him. I think Dix, this year, this is, you know, maybe Dexter's last year, he, but he has something to prove. He was out of the top six last year for the first time. Yeah. So See? Dexter, Dexter is seriously, seriously taking this so serious. And, you know, and, and it might be his last show or it might be his last Olympic this year. We'll never know. But I probably, if I was Rami or Rami's, you know, Rami's team, I would probably say, listen, shit, you know, why not make the Lebanese fans happy? You know what I'm saying? And go over there and get that title and then go to Tampa. Right. Sure. Chris, were you going to say something? No, I was, we, me and Dave were talking about this on the radio show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, previous to the radio show about, maybe it was on the radio show uh, about Dexter doing Tampa and Rami doing Tampa and knowing that Dexter for the first time didn't place like second or third or first at the Olympia, whatever he placed. I don't even know where he placed. Seventh. That's a dangerous, a pissed off Dexter, meaning a, a tremendously dedicated Dexter running into Tampa is not the guy you want to stand next to because he has the ability to just roll the dice and show up like crazy conditioned which might look make look really really good condition look way off you know what i mean yeah yes. randy could show up good and it might not even look that good because Dexter yeah, yeah that's good. what i mean because if dexter just you know and and it's easy for dexter to go into a tampa and just say you know what uh dave you you, you know what dj i'm coming in and i'm going to come in at my all-time hardest and that could negate anyone's yeah, and he ain't got to worry about qualifying either. He can yeah, that's what I mean. That yeah, team. yeah, that's what I mean. It's it's not like the Olympia where you know you have to measure out like I, I don't know if Dex even does that. You know, should I be fuller? Should I be full and tight? Should I just try to come in harder? You know, if he's just laying it all on the line for that Tampa win, because the other part is he wants to win that show. And I think that would be win number thirty for him, right? There, there's Dexter now. That's telling Dexter that. calling. He's listening to the show. He's like, all right, stop talking about me, guys. <laughs> of course, yeah. Dexter's got his internal feed. Dave, you wanted to wrap up real quick? No, I, I think that, you know, I love the speculation because it, yeah. you know, we're really, we don't know who's going to do what. I mean, we're just, we're throwing it out there. These are the dream scenarios. But the bottom line is that this is what the fans want to see. This is the fun part. This is the fun <laughs> part. But we imagine if all the scenarios we laid out came to, came to fruition. We saw a Rami versus Dexter, uh, you know, battling it out in Tampa. We saw Kai and, and Phil commit to the Olympia. You know, the only person who would be in that dream scenario who we definitely won't see till next year would be a Flex Lewis in the open class. But, you know, that'll be next year's deba iron debate, you know. <laughs> but it, it, it makes the sport that much better. And Dan Solomon's putting all this new effort into the Olympia, trying to build it up. And, and they, they got the new sponsor, Wings of Strength, putting in a ton of money. It's going to be a great Olympia this year. Too bad I won't be there. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. And, of course, between now and then, so much is going to unfold. That is going to do for this episode of Iron Debate. Again, Dennis James, Chris Aceto, Dave Palomo, and our producer, Tyler Shore. I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time. Are we offline? <laughs>